Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And we are here with part 11, I think we're up to now, of the R. Kelly series. <laughs> So, we now have a face for LC in the R. Kelly indictment. Her name is Lanita Carter, and she was the hair, she is the hairstylist who um, alleges that R. Kelly um, masturbated or something and spit in her face, and she had this t-shirt that she'd been carrying around uh, since 2003, which had been like 16 years ago. Now, according to her, she was R. Kelly's um, hairstylist, and that she had been his stylist for two years before the alleged assault took place. And so I was trying to do the math because if this happened in 2003 and they came forward and so she filed her claim in February of this year. So that's 16 years and she said she was 24 at the time. So wouldn't that make her 40 and outside of the... um statue of limitation <laughs> so according to chicago statue it says if the victim reported the crime to authorities within three years after the commission of the offense and if the dna profile of the offender is obtained and entered into a dna database within 10 years after the commission of the offense a prosecution of the offense may be commenced at any time so basically they would have to say that she actually brought this shirt to them within three years of it happening and just never wanted to press charges. And now she's coming forward to press charges in order for them to prosecute this case. So is that what they're trying to say? Y'all let me know in the comments. But uh, what do you guys think about her coming forward? Because she is the one that when they said that they wanted to um, televise the hearings, she was the one that said that she didn't want to be televised. She didn't want to be raped through the coals. And so my thing or my theory is that she's now coming forward because Michael Alvinati got to get the, you know, all this thing came out about him saying that 90% of everything that came out um, with the R. Kelly case was bullshit. And so I'm thinking that he told this girl, okay, I need you to go and do this interview. I need you to speak out, come forward <laughs> about you know, your story to kind of get the spotlight back on the R. Kelly situation. So guys, um, she basically says that she's been living with this shame, living with this hurt, living with the embarrassment all of these years since this alleged attack happened, that she you know, is tired of being on the, on the bus and people are talking about, you know, they need to leave him alone. Why they coming out, you know, with these stories, why they lying and everything. And so she says she's tired of hiding, hiding. She's tired of living with the embarrassment and the shame. So now she's coming out to tell her story. And so, you know, she was crying on the video and she's supposed to be, she's actually being interviewed by CBS and I think it's going to air tomorrow. And I'm probably not going to get up and watch it because I was so over the last interviews that they did. And y'all know I don't get out of bed until about 10 o'clock in the morning. So, um, what else did, my thought is, so he was her, so I'm trying to understand how for two years y'all had this relationship and he was your stylist. And then all of a sudden one random day, he just walked in and wanted you to perform oral sex on him. And when you refused, she says that he started masturbating and then he spit in her face. But then she said that on the, um, on the t-shirt that she was wearing, that she turned in to have tested that they said that his semen came back and it was a match for him. And you guys know that they were able to do the test because of when he was arrested in the last trial, they take, you know, took the DNA. And so once your DNA is in these databases, they can do whatever they want with it. But I'm just trying to figure out, like, were they sleeping together prior to this incident? Or was this just a random incident that he just walked in one day and decided that he was going to do this to her? And if so, why? Like, what was going on in his head? And then also... 
is this thing within the statute of limitations if she's saying that it happened in 2003 and that she was 24 at the time so anyway just want to pop in um, share this information with you guys and get your thoughts on what's going on um, leave your comments below rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and until the next time i shall talk to you guys later bye bye